to spend eternity with him. If you're saved, if you're in here and you're lost, uh, you don't have no hope. You're going to die and you're going to open your eyes up in hell. What you need today is Jesus Christ and you're in the right place. I don't know uh, all your hearts. It looks like everyone's saved. There might be somebody in here that's not. But if you're not, I, I hope today that you would make a faith response to the gospel of Jesus Christ and be set free, amen, free from sin and on your way to heaven where we can be with him one day. That was a beautiful song, Ruth. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Children's Church. <coughs> Children's Church. If you guys don't care, uh, pray for little Isaiah. Uh, he's got the same thing that Kim had, and he's over there struggling right now. So y'all pray for him. We'll be reading uh, from Colossians chapter 3 today. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 10. And this may be more of a, a teaching today. The Lord's put on my heart to do a, a study here, and it'll more than likely be in two parts. Uh, today we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at standing versus state. Your standing uh, with God in Christ uh, versus the state that you may be in right now. Uh, we'll be discussing that today, and Lord willing, next Sunday morning, uh, we'll be talking about how to adjust your state. And we all need adjusting in our state, and our state, it, it, it varies often. Every day our state varies, but our standing stays the same, amen. We'll be reading Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 10. Is everyone there? Those who are able to stand for the reading of God's Word. And if I read a word wrong, forgive me. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. 
Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concoptions, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, God, we just come before you today. God, so thankful for your grace and your mercy. And so thankful for your word, God, that, that you divinely inspired it to be written so that we could learn that we were lost and we needed something and that something we needed was your son, Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life and nobody could come to you but through your son, Jesus Christ. And we're thankful, God, that you give us your grace and you give us the knowledge of your grace. And God, we're also thankful thankful, God, that you give us a house here, Sydney Missionary Baptist Church, so that we could come and fellowship together and learn of you, God, so that we could be so close, so closely knit in your love that we could help each other and benefit each other in this life. And God, right now, I pray that, that you deliver this message. I can't deliver a message, I can't preach it, and I can't teach it, but it takes your Holy Spirit to teach and to reveal. God, send your Holy Spirit today to do the work in this house. Push me to the side and let your word be manifested in power and in all the truth, God, that heaven can give us today. And God, whatever you do in our hearts and our minds today, we'll give you all the praise and honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Like I said, we're going to be looking at your standing. First of all, your standing if you are a born-again believer. If you're in here and you're lost, uh, then your standing is not the standing that we're going to be talking about today, which we will get to you. Uh, but in these scriptures, we'll notice that there are two deaths taking place, and we're going to talk about them. And I'm not talking about the first death and the second death. The second death is, is torment. That's the lake of fire, and we're not talking about that. We're talking about two deaths that happens in a Christian's life in these scriptures. The first death, and we're going to go uh, through all the scriptures, Lord willing, but we're going to look at verse 3. It says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. This is the first death that these scriptures are talking about. Is you, has died, you have died, and now your life, or what part of you that is alive, is hid with Christ in God. The second death, we'll look at verse 5, where it says, Mortify, therefore, your members, or to make dead, to kill them. Mortify the things of the flesh. So we're dead, and then we're dead. Two different deaths here. Verse 3 is the death of... And it is talking about your standing. Your standing with God. You are a dead, but you are alive in Christ. Now if you're in here today and you're lost, you are very much alive, but you are dead in your sin. Does that make sense? As Christians, we are dead, but we're alive in Christ. Our life is hid in Christ, in God. But if you're lost, you are alive. You're living and breathing right now, but you are dead in your sins and your trespasses. And this seems like a, like a paradox. Seems like it's contradictory uh, to what it's saying, but it's really two sides of the same truth. You're dead and you're alive. Those are two truths, and they seem to contradict each other, but they don't. In Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, but yet I live. Not I, but Christ that lives in me. So how can this be? 
This is talking about your standing with God. We're not talking about state. We're talking about standing. Your standing if you are a born again believer. And for you to be born again, the latter or the former existence must not be your identity any longer. So what was alive before you became dead can't be alive anymore with your standing. The old man is dead and the new man is alive in Christ. So Christ exists in you and causes you to exist in life and your life is in Christ. Now if you're lost, you don't have Christ in you so the life that Christ brings is not present in your body. You may be alive but you're dead in your sins because Christ doesn't exist in you. Now the new man, you got to remember this, the new man is not the old man with a makeover. You ladies wake up in the morning and you do makeovers every day. You all are just as beautiful before you start putting on the makeup, but we cannot convince you all of that. Can't convince you. Really the men could use some makeup. <laughs> But you guys go through a makeover every morning. Every morning. And this new man is not the old man with a makeover. It's not a new and improved old man. It's just something separate. The old man is dead and the new man is alive. So it's not an improved old man. The new man is Christ formed in the believer. It's Him actually coming inside of you and surrounding you with His identity. So it's not the old man. You guys know that? You can file down, you can sand, you can paint the old man. It's never going to be worthy to inherit heaven. It's never going to be what God calls righteous. It's never going to be the apple of God's eye. You can't give the old man a makeover. So Paul said he was crucified with Christ, but he lives. How can this be? Once you are born again, which means Christ is formed in you, that means you are in Christ and Christ is in you. Now you are a partaker of Christ's accomplishments. And we touched on this in Bible study a week ago. But everything that Christ did, He has now done in you if you are a born again believer, and He has been born in you. So everything that He accomplished has now inside you, which means that you have life because He's alive. Christ says, I'm alive, so now you can live. So when we become born again believers, this means that we were crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, quickened with Christ, risen with Christ, we're joint heirs with Christ. And this means that we are justified in Christ, that we are sanctified in Christ, that we are satisfied in Christ, we are complete in Christ, and one day when we see Him as He is and we'll be made like unto Him, we will be glorified with Christ. This is only for the born again believer. If you are not a born again believer, it means the Christ in you or the new birth hasn't taken place in your life, then God says you are none of His and you will not be glorified with Christ. Christ, you will be in hell with the devil and his angels. A place that wasn't even created for you and you could have escaped it. You could have escaped it, but you neglected the grace that God has given you. So if you're a born again believer, this is your standing with God. Everything that Christ is, you are. Because he lives in you. Our righteousness went from filthy rags to now we have the righteousness of Christ. So this is our heavenly and eternal standing. Is when God looks at us, He sees His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's your standing. Now this is dependent on if Christ is in you or not. A faith response to the gospel is what it takes to have Christ in you. And it's not what you do or what you don't do. It's not the thou shouts that you do, the thou shalt nots that you don't do. It's not if you uh, give a million dollars to the church. It's not if you uh, do this or do that. Uh, it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with the law. It has everything to do with being born again or faith response to the gospel. Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. 
So if you're in here today and you're saved, it's nothing that you did. It's something that you learned about. You learned about what Christ did for you, and you accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, and He was uh, coming to your heart, and you were born again, and now you're standing with God is the same as what Christ standing with God is. Grace. I was reading this the other day. You know what that stands for? God's righteousness at Christ's expense. God's righteousness at Christ's expense. So whosoever believeth in Christ is born of God. 1 John 3, 2 said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. How many sons and daughters of God do we have in here today? If you are not born again, you are not a son or a daughter of God. We have passed, now these are Christians, we have passed from death unto life. The old man has died, and now our life, the new man, is hid in Christ, so it's no longer us that lives, but it's Christ that lives in us. We are hid in Christ. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So if that Spirit, that indwelling Holy Spirit, the Christ in you is there, then you are sealed with the promise. Amen. For we were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Sometimes we were dark. Sometimes we were sons of Adam. But now we have been made sons of God. Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So nothing that we could do, we could justify ourselves. But now we've been justified through what Christ has did. See, because when He comes in you, He is justified because He kept all the law. So now that He's in you, you share his identity so now you are justified so now we have peace with God so apart from Christ you have no peace with God therefore you can't be reunited with God therefore you can't be a friend of God therefore when it's all said and done you will not be in heaven but you'll make hell your home apart from Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this into this grace wherein we stand you're standing. You're standing. If you're a born-again believer, you're standing now. You have access to God's grace by faith and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. This is your standing. Your standing has changed from being a son of Adam, a son of Adam, having failure and sin uh, in your life put on your account that you're going to pay for, and now we have been translated to a son of God to a son of God. And this is your standing. If you're not born again, you're not a son of God. You are alive, but you are dead in your sins. Your heavenly and eternal standing is death. And a born again believer, your heavenly and eternal standing is life in Christ Jesus. Now we're going to move on to our state. We all understand that? Move on to our state. Your state while you are a pilgrim on this earth will never fully match your standing with God in Christ. Did you know that? The state that you're in right now will never look like your standing. If we ever understood who we were in Christ, if we ever understood what Christ did for us, if we ever understood that, oh, the peace and joy that we would have, and no matter how hard we work in this life, no matter how much uh, that we work to be righteous, our state will never fully match or never fully look like what we already are in God's eyes. It'll only reach that status once we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. When we see Him as He is and we're changed like unto Him, then our state will fully match our standing. If your state had to equal what your standing currently is to reach heaven, then we all might as well leave and go home and do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. If we ever had to reach uh, uh, perfection, if we ever had to be righteous according to the law uh, to make it to heaven, then we're all wasting our time. We could be out spending time with our family and doing things that, that we would rather be doing. Amen. 
It would be a waste of time. But I'm thankful today that Jesus Christ, in Him alone, do we have a standing that makes us acceptable to move into the kingdom of God. And our standing is solid. Our standing can't be moved, but our state moves around a lot. And there are many levels to our state. Anybody ever in here been spiritual? You ever been carnal? You ever been both in the same day? You ever been both in the same hour? A lot of times I'm both in, the, in two minutes. You moving back and forth. Anybody ever uh, been babes in Christ? Everybody ate a little bit of meat of the Word and been a little mature. We move back and forth. A lot of times we'll move back into the babe status. We'll forget our standing. And we forget our standing, then we move back in to where we need milk again. So our state varies. Our state moves back and forth. But if our state had to constantly match up with our standing, we would never be able to inherit the kingdom of God. And it reminds me of a lot of other churches that teach you, you must do this and you must do that and you must do this. you got to go to this church or uh, you can't uh, get married and get divorced and get married again and all this stuff. And you have to do all this to make it to heaven. They ain't got no hope either. Because no matter what state they're in, no matter how righteous they think they are, their state doesn't equal my righteousness when I'm born again. There are many levels to a state, and we know all these states uh, vary. And the reason that they vary is though our flesh may be dead in our heavenly and eternal state, we're in a temporal state right now on this earth. This is not our home. We're pilgrims in this land. And our flesh, or the old man, may be dead. May be dead, but in this earthly and temporal place, it is very much alive and something that we have to deal with. If all of a sudden we got saved and then God took this flesh away from us, then we couldn't dwell among men and lead them to Christ. If we all of a sudden received our glorified bodies, then how would we minister to others? If we got saved and God just took it to heaven, who took us to heaven, and He could because He paid for us with His blood, then who would be here to represent? Who would be here to lead others to Christ? So we have to be in this temporal, earthly home for just a little while. And it's not our home. We're pilgrims in this land, and one day we will leave here. One day. Man in his best state. Can you remember a time when you was in your best state? Your most spiritual moment. Maybe you are now, maybe it was in your past. I got pretty spiritual for about 15 minutes yesterday. It passed pretty quick. Passed pretty quick. But if you can remember the best you've ever been, it's vanity. The best you've ever been in your life. Paul says that he knows that in him, and that is in his flesh, dwelleth no good thing. There's nothing that your flesh has to offer that heaven would accept. <laughs> It's the Christ in you is what's going to heaven. Amen. And He has wrapped you up so tightly in His identity that you're going with Him. You're going to escape the guilt and penalty of sin. Amen. You're going to escape judgment just because of what Christ has done in your life. And this flesh that we wrestle with, and it's nothing good. Nothing good. We don't part with this flesh until we see Him as He is. So while we're on this earth, we can never match our state with our standing because we always have this flesh present in our life that we're contending with. It'll always be here. But you've got to remember, and we've talked about this before, that when you make a mistake, it's no longer you that sins, it's the sin that dwells in you. And this is what Paul was talking about. In me dwells no good thing. That's in his flesh. So when we sin, it's our flesh. But that doesn't change our standing with God. I think last Sunday I mentioned that no matter what you do, you can do good all day, it doesn't make you more saved. And you can do bad all day, and it doesn't make you less saved. Your standing with God is eternal. It's heavenly. You're already seated in heavenly places with Christ. Amen. You are now a son of God. Amen. We'll talk about a man. He had two sons one time. And the youngest son 
he got tired of living with daddy. And he said, Dad, he said, give me everything that you owe me, all my inheritance. All my inheritance, and I'm going to leave you, and I'm going to go make my own way. Now, this was this man's son, his son. And he did what he said. He gave him everything that he was entitled to inherit, uh, inherit at his daddy's death. And the boy took it, and he left his state of being close to the father. His state changed. He left the father's house and he began to journey out into a land that he'd never been with all his inheritance. And this boy had some things on his mind. He said he went and blew all his money on riotous living or wild living. It's hard to tell what this old boy done. Probably some of the things you all in here have done. Amen. Anybody ever, ever went out and lived some riotous living? Well, that's what this boy did, and he spent all of his money. And when all of his money was gone, a famine hit the land. And the Bible said that he was in want. In want. So his state had changed. He had left the father's house, and now his state has changed. He's left his home and went into a foreign land. A foreign land. He left his father, spent all his money, a famine came, and now he's in want. And a lot of times we do this in a Christian life. Some of us in here today may be struggling with, am I saved? Look at how I'm living. Look at my state. Your state does not affect your standing. If you are born again, you are still born again. If you are saved, you are still saved. The problem is your state is varying. And we'll get into that maybe a little later, and maybe next Sunday we'll talk about adjusting our state. But he left his state of being close to the Father, and he's out in this foreign land. He's becoming one. Now he has an opportunity. If he would remember his standing, if he would remember his standing and go back to where he stood in the Father's house, but there was a problem. Anybody in here ever have bad friends? You ever had a friend that kept you from serving God? You ever had a friend that would keep your life hindered, would, would uh, contribute to your state? <laughs> you see, while this boy was out in this foreign land, he joined himself to a citizen of that country. Now keep in mind, this country is not where this boy belonged. He was in a foreign land. He had left his state of being in the Father's house. And when we are not acting spiritual, what has happened is we have left our state in the Father's house and we have went out into the, into the world or a foreign land. Amen. We're not of this world. We're pilgrims here. But we've left the state of being safe and secure in our Father's arms in this temporal earthly place. And we look like sons. So now we've left this state. We have went out into a foreign land and we don't look like sons anymore. Everybody that sees us say, well, there ain't no way he's saved. Anybody ever accuse you of that? Anybody ever looked at you and said, there's no way you're saved? I was working at Consol not too long ago, and there was a boy there that was a Christian, but he didn't act right all the time. Matter of fact, most of the time he didn't act right. And everybody said, if that boy's going to make it to heaven, I'm going with him. <laughs> That's not true. If they're born again, they'll go with him. <laughs> they can act good all they want to. It doesn't change their standing. Amen. You have to have a standing. You have to look like Christ to God. Amen. Because he was the only one worthy to sit at the right hand of the Father. And he was the only one worthy of all the promises in this book. Amen. If you want your standing to be secure, then you must be in Christ. That means he must be born on the inside of you. And then that standing is secure. Amen. And you'll make heaven your home one day. Doesn't matter what this old boy did. Didn't matter how many times that he made mistakes. Now, was he wrong? Was he in the wrong? Absolutely. This boy wasn't acting like a son. But the problem wasn't his standing. It was his state. And the problem right now you'll see with this old young boy's life wasn't his standing. It was the state he was in. And he found himself in a state of being hungry and in need, in want, in want, in a distant country, he's far from home. Don't know where he's at. I remember when I went off to college, I was in a distant country, and it wasn't like home. Amen. It wasn't like home, and I wasn't very far away. 
And God was a fairy tale to most of those people. Wasn't nothing like home. And I had people there that influenced me in a negative way. A negative way. Through their influence and my ignorance, I didn't act like a son anymore. And now this old boy has joined himself to a citizen of this country, a place that he knows nothing about, he's not a part of, he's not from there, shouldn't be there. But his state has varied and he's found himself in a foreign land. And now he has uh, joined himself with a citizen of this country. And this is what the Bible's talking about when it says not to be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. A lot of times we will yoke ourselves together with an unbeliever. Now that doesn't mean that we're not their friends. That doesn't mean that we're not there to help. How can we witness to and lead them to Christ if we totally separate ourselves from them? Amen. Jesus ate with the sinners. Amen. But being unleaving the yoked is being, or being yoked with somebody is being so close to them that they af uh, affect your state. <laughs> so this young boy, he had uh, joined himself with a citizen of this country, and now all of a sudden this ci uh, citizen sent him out to feed the swine. That wasn't his calling. That wasn't where he should have been. And I want you to be very, very careful today. That you don't join yourself with somebody that will pull you right out of your calling. That will affect your state so much that you should have been serving the word of God to people, but now you're feeding slop to the hogs. And a lot of times we do this when we're unevenly yoked with unbelievers. But he's out here feeding this swine. And he's hungry. He's so hungry that he wants to eat the, eat the same stuff that he's feeding these pigs. Eat the same stuff that he's feeding these pigs. And then one day he said, man, I'm going to die here. And you may be in here today and your state has changed so much for the worse. You're like, man, I'm dying. I'm so far from God. You may be doubting your salvation. Let me tell you something. Your standing hasn't changed. Your state has got much worse. Amen. And nobody, nobody might be able to look at you and say he's a son of God. Amen. But it doesn't change your standing. This old boy says, I'm going to die here. And then all of a sudden he came to his senses and he started thinking about his father. Thinking about his father. How many times has your cha state changed so much that you quit even thinking about God? There's been times when, uh, b before I rededicated my life that I didn't even pray for months. Didn't even think about God because I didn't fully understand my standing. I didn't think that I was a son anymore. And a lot of times we'll fall victim to that. And we won't be thinking about our father or getting our mind on the father. And then all of a sudden our path is not directed by God. You see, when we, when we acknowledge him in all of our ways, what does God say he'll do? He directs your path. So in this boy's want, said he was in want. He's feeding these swine. All of a sudden, he says, I'm going to die here. And he begins to acknowledge his father. Amen. He begins to remember what his father had done for him. And the, the way his father took care of him, he started acknowledging his father. And now this began to direct his path. So he had made all these bad decisions. And it had pulled his state from being in the father's house to not even acting like a son, not even looking like a son. And now he's put his focus back on his father or he is acknowledging his father. And now the path is made straight for him to come back to the father's house. Too many times we don't uh, use the opportunity we have just to think about our Heavenly Father and think about what He's done for us and, and, and put our mind on heavenly things. That's what the opening scripture said. Focus on the heavenly things and not the temporal earthly things because when we focus on God, when we put our focus on Jesus Christ, we can't go to the right and to the left. Amen. Because He will direct our paths. We will be back home in the Father's house before before you know it. And if you ain't here today and your state has changed so bad, you're in a bad shape, you're hungry, it feels like you're feeding the swine, amen, you know you're called to do this, but now you're doing this and you know it's not right, let me tell you something, you're still a son or a daughter of God, and if you'll get your mind back on Him, He will direct your path back into His house where you need to be. Amen. 
For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall, uh, or if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. And that's what this old boy was doing. That's why he says, I'm going to die here. Because it was his own desires, his fleshly desires, that caused him to leave the Father's house to begin with. He said, I want to make my own way. And then he went out here and he was tempted to live a riotous life. This was the flesh tempting him. So now he's living after the flesh. And it's killing him spiritually. Killing him spiritually. Destroying him spiritually. He's in the hog slot when he shouldn't be back at the Father's house. And a lot of times, we don't use the tool that we have that's been given to us to get ourselves out of this mess because there is that Scripture says. But if you through the Spirit do mortify, there's that word mortify. Mortify. Mortify is the death that takes place in your state. If you're in here and you're a born-again believer, the death of your old man has already taken place heavenly and eternal. And you are alive in Christ. But while we're pilgrims on this land, we have an obligation to mortify our flesh that's alive in this temporal place through the Spirit that God has implanted on the inside of us so that we not only have a standing as a Son of God, but we look like a Son of God. Because that's what's going to lead others to Christ. So when he came to himself, it says when he came to himself, and he acknowledged the Father. Who was he? He was a son. And for you to get out of this slop hole that you're in right now, you had to come to yourself. And yourself is you're a son or a daughter of God. And you've got to remember that. And acknowledge him, and he'll direct your past back home. So he got back home and his father met him with arms wide open, did he? Ran out there and met him. When I rededicated my life to God, I was coming back with my head hanging down. Didn't know if he would accept me or not. But he ran out to me and he grabbed me and he let me know that I was still a son. How did he let me know I was still a son? Because he blessed my socks off me. He still wanted to use me. And when this boy come home, his father put the best robe on him. And not only, he didn't just give him a robe and say, here, put this on. The word says that he put that robe on him, amen. He put a ring on his hand. He didn't just give him a ring and say, here, put this on, son. He said, give me your hand. I'm going to put this ring on you. It goes on to say that he gave gave him a pair of shoes and told him to put them on. No, he said he put them shoes on him, amen. And he went out and he had the, the fatted calf killed and they celebrated because he had come back to the father's house or he celebrated because his state had changed, amen. He was always a son. His standing had never changed, but his state had changed. And if your state has changed in here today, won't you come back to him by just acknowledging him? You ain't got to make a big move, amen. Just get your mind on him and he'll make the path straight for you, amen. You don't have to worry about putting that robe of righteousness on. He'll put it on for you, amen. You don't have to worry about putting that ring on. He'll put it on for you, amen. You don't have to worry about getting your feet covered up again. He'll put the shoes on you and before you know it, just by acknowledging him, you will look like a son, amen. Somebody praise him. Now he's back home, and not only is he a son, but he looks like a son. And it's important that we look like sons and daughters. Now listen, you can't make everybody happy. And you can overextend yourself so much that you'll wear yourself out. And you begin to feel your spiritual state start going down again. All you got to do is acknowledge Him. Cry out to Him. Hit your knees and say, Jesus, I can't do this. You got to do it. That's the way He designed it anyway, amen. What did we say about the flesh earlier? The new you is not the old you transformed, amen. The new you is Christ in you and He wants to do all the work. And the way He does that is if you put your faith in Him. You want to look like a son, don't you? You want to look like a daughter, don't you? Then we have to keep our eyes on Him. It was one time my little brother, he was always in trouble. There was, was this one time I'll never forget. He got in a fight with three boys down at Dilbarton. And he whooped two of them, would have whooped three of them, but the other one ran. And he whooped the two pretty bad. So since the other boy ran, got in his vehicle and went home, Nick knew where he lived, so he got in his vehicle and went to his house. 
So Nick went and knocked on the door, and nobody answered, so he kicked it in. He went in and whooped the third boy. Wanted to make sure he got them all. And while he was in there, the boy's mommy called the police and they arrested him and the police called me. They didn't want to call dad. They called me and I went and met him. And everybody there said, boy, that's Tyrone's stepson. See, because my dad was always into stuff like that when he was young. My dad never put it with nobody's junk. He would fight you in a heartbeat and that's the same way my brother was. You see, my brother looked like my dad. He was not only my dad's son. He was acting like my dad's son. And everybody around him through his actions could see that that was Tyrone Steph's son. I want people to know that I am a child of God. And you ain't going to do that by whooping three boys down at Del Barton. But you're going to act like him. And you know how you act like God? is you quit fighting this yourself and you surrender your life to Christ and let Him live it through you. Amen. Because you are dead. And what life you have exists on the inside of His existence. And if the new you is going to move, Christ has to move. If you're moving, it's the old you moving. But if Christ is moving in your life, you're going to look like a son or a daughter of God. So how do we change our state? How many in here today wants their state to be changed? Amen. I want my state to be changed. I ain't perfect, but I want to get more perfect. And we know that we're not going to be perfect until we see Him as He is. The state that we are in is never going to equal our standing while we're in this temporal, earthly home. But we could do better, couldn't we? So how do we change our state? The scripture says we mortify our members. How do we mortify our members? We'll go back to Galatians 2.20. When Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. Amen. And this is how he mortified his members. You ready? And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Faith. Faith. You see, when the prodigal son was out there in the slop holes of life, or Sean Moore would call it Hog Slop Avenue, <laughs> he acknowledged his father, didn't he? And he knew all his father had to offer. And right now, if you want to have faith in Jesus Christ and get yourself out of whatever you're in, if you want to advance your state, to look more like your standing. We have to acknowledge Him, put our minds and hearts on Him, acknowledge Him in all of our ways. Any decision that you have to make right now, won't you ask Him to make it for you? Any direction you may have come to a fork in the road and you don't know which way to turn, won't you ask Him? Too many times we just turn and it wasn't God's way for us to go. But if we will acknowledge Him and put our hearts and our minds on Him, then that means that we have put our faith in Him. That means we've humbled ourselves and realized, like the prodigal son, he said, I'm not even worthy to be called a son, but I'm going back because that's the only hope that I have. None of us are worthy to be called sons, amen. But I can tell you right now that Jesus Christ is the only hope you have. You may already in here be saved, amen, but I'm sure that you don't want to live the way that you're living right now. I'm sure that you want out of this slop hole. It's going to take you acknowledging Him and setting your heart and your mind on Him and He will direct your paths or He will mortify your flesh for you. Amen. Amen. If you're in here and you're saved, you can't forget your standing. You can't forget your standing. Actually, in Romans, let me read you the rest of this verse. Romans chapter 8. Or no, it's in Galatians. Turn to Galatians 2.20 if you got your Bible open. Galatians 2.21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Did you know you can frustrate the grace of God? For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. If you're in here today and you think, man, I'm not saved anymore. Maybe you got saved at a young age and you're like, I'm no longer a son. 
the grace of God is looking down on you like, God, did he forget what I'd done for him? Jesus is looking down saying, boy, mm, if you just read your Bible, you'd know your standing with God. I come in your life and I made you new. Your mistakes can't send you to hell, but I'm going to send you to heaven because of what I've done. That's what he would tell you. You're frustrating the grace when you're trying to save yourself. You can't. So if you're in here and you say, you may have been trying to get out of this pig slop that you're in. Maybe you're trying to do it with your own words, trying to live right. All you have to do is acknowledge Him. And if you're in here and you're lost, you're not a son and you're not a daughter. And you're on your way to a devil's hell. But you can accept Jesus Christ today with a faith response to the gospel. Jesus Christ came and lived a perfect life. Died a death he didn't deserve that we deserve. He was buried in a grave and on the third day he rose again and he ascended into heaven and he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession right now for all the ones that has chose to believe in him. Amen. And you can have that in your life right now. You can have representation in heaven. You can be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus today. You can be crucified, buried. Uh, you can be quickened. You can be risen and you can be glorified with him one day by a faith response to the gospel. And if you ain't hearing you say, you ain't hearing you say, and you just want things to get better, this altar is a place to make it better. Humble yourselves before God and say, God, I can't get out, but I know you can make my path straight and you can get me out of here. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your paths as the singers come.